Everybody knows Lance Burton. Uh, I think the first time that I saw you were still at the Hacienda. Oh, That's, yeah. That was a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway. That was two hotels ago. Two hotels ago. Okay. <laughs> anyway, if you give Lance Ross, and he's going to take over the photo. No, you have not. You've been a member of the idea. Yes. It's my pleasure to introduce. So here's what our guest today is Matt King. Here's what's going to do. I'm going to uh, kind of interview him and get him to tell some great stories from his career. Uh, but before that, we're going to have to see if he will do a little uh, performance for us. And uh, for those of you who are not familiar with Matt King, who's born and raised in Louisville, Kentucky, but for the past few decades, he has been a Las Vegas headliner. He appears every day at Harris Hotel, and uh, he is a, a quite simply the finest working magician in the world today. Wow! And we are so lucky to have Matt King, ladies and gentlemen. Wow! The f <laughs> the f the what? The finest working magician. In wow! The world today. Yeah, my, my mic's yeah, on. You're okay. you're fine. I, uh, that's really hard to follow, the finest work, because I was just going to do a trick. <laughs> and uh, I, I, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a trick. Uh, you guys have all seen this, but I'm going to do it anyway, because we have time, we have some time to fill. <laughs> This is actually, the, for those of you who haven't seen this, it's the very first trick I ever learned when I was a little boy. My grandpa taught me this. This used to be his jacket. It did. My grandmother made this jacket. It used to be her couch. <laughs> Whenever he would do the trick, my grandpa would always say that the rope had two ends and one center. He cut off one end of the rope. He'd say, now, I have a piece of rope with just one end. I know, it made sense to me too. <laughs> he cut off that end. He'd say, now I just have the center of the rope. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> he would cut off the middle like this. He'd say, now I have no middle and no ends. <laughs> oh, no, I wasn't that stupid. <laughs> I could tell he still had a piece of rope. <laughs> oh, that, that, is, <laughs> that is awfully kind of you. <laughs> Seriously, considering where we are. <laughs> I'll start over. <laughs> Howdy. Howdy. I'm Matt King. All right, back to the rope. My grandpa, he would cut the middle of the rope. He'd say, now I have two exactly equal pieces. Mine aren't even close. Two exactly equal pieces. I don't know how I did my grandpa's. His two pieces were, his were like this. Quite a bit closer, really. I'll start over. That's two ends. I know, it worked. Two ends and a center. Do me a favor, Mr. Lance Burton. Yes. Pay attention. You watch this end of the rope. I know you've seen this 7,000 times. <laughs> you're watching this end. You guys in the back over here, you watch this end over here. Wait, you're watching this end, but it's already over here with the other one. So I have a piece of rope. It has two ends. Oh, thanks. The ends are here, the center is down here, but if we take the ends off, you can't find the center. <laughs> no one knows. No one knows where the center is till we put the ends back, and there it is. Right in between. Oh. You see my teeth? <laughs> yeah. These used to be my grandpa's too. <laughs> I cut the rope using the small vermin-like teeth. <laughs> so we have two pieces of rope tied together with a knot. Oh, don't touch that. That's coated in spit. All right. Let me get these scissors to really cut this thing apart. Come out of there, boys. I cut the rope into halves. The halves into fourths. The fourths into eighths. And the eighths into sixteenths. Thank you. <laughs> Kentucky Public School? 
That's what I was going to say, little pieces. <laughs> Jefferson County Public School. All right. For the big finish, I wave my hand over the 16, 14 pieces, 13 pieces of rope. Stay there till you learn it. I say the magic words. Bingo. Uh, order of Merlin. I say the magic words, order of Merlin, and they all come out in one piece. I'm not kidding, these knots come right off. It's a piece of rope, two ends, one center. That's the rope trick. Hey! Oh, there you go. How oh, a good catch. Mr. Lanceberg. I was there when George Sands lectured to our club and he bought the manuscript. I was there in the dressing room at Tombstone Junction. <laughs> And now, Matt, tell, you, you, you were telling me just at breakfast, that rope trick, tell them the story, what you just told me, you were doing an interview, and, the, and then you did that trick just for the camera? Yeah, so there's a magazine in Las Vegas called Seven Magazine, and I had done an interview for, with them, and uh, they said, can we put like one little, do you have a little trick we can put on our website? And I, uh, yeah, I have a piece of rope. So I did that trick just for the cameraman, no audience, so no laughs, no applause, no nothing. Just did the trick just for that guy. They put it on, I thought, eh, they'll, you know, I don't care, there'll be a hundred people who see it. And uh, the last I looked, it was over 10 million views. <laughs> on, so thank you for passing that around if you're the one of the people who did that. <laughs> So see, now I can't do it in the show because everybody in America has seen it. <laughs> <laughs> see, you don't, have, you don't have to do crazy stuff to get views on YouTube. You can do a magic trick. You, can, you don't even have to pay people, you which apparently you can do. Yeah, I didn't realize okay. you could pay, pay for views on YouTube. So, and also, everybody, if you have a question for Matt King, think up a good question. And whoever has the best question, we have this lovely prize. It's sterilized. You, it's sterilized, apparently. <laughs> You will receive whoever whoever gets the best whoever comes with the best, gets this lovely Billy Toppet Master Magician hat. You yeah. have just made it so we're not going to get any questions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so think think of a question, but 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 when we point, if you if we take if we get to the questions, ask a real question. Don't tell a story, because we're on a time limit. <laughs> Don't tell how much you love Matt King, because he hates that. No, you hate that. Okay. I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the hand there? Did you have a question? I've always wondered how you came up with the idea for the cult of invisibility. Oh, how did you come up? That's a great question. How did you tell us the story? How did you come up the process of coming up with a cloak of invisibility? I did not come up with that. You did not come This up. doesn't leave this room. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> in Louisville, Kentucky, uh, I don't know, I was in my 20s. Yes. And <laughs> <laughs> Just ignore me. Okay. <laughs> I'm doing my exercise. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's way too much weight for you. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> I... Uh, in Louisville, Kentucky, I was in my 20s and I was renting a room from a fellow magician named Tom Hamilton. Yes, yes. Remember Tom? Tom's a very good friend of mine. Yeah. Yes. So uh, my, our, my buddy Tom and I'm renting a room there and I'm, it's a big house in downtown Louisville, really beautiful, stately Wayne Manor. You've yes. been in there yes. many times. I've been uh, there. So we, you called it stately Wayne Manor. I don't think that's actually where the Batman lived. But. Uh, I'm sitting in the living room reading, and my friend Tom comes on in the room. He's wearing a poncho. Do you know this story, Carmen? Is that why you asked that? No. Oh, you never heard. Oh, so I'm sitting in the living room, and Tom Hamilton comes <laughs> tiptoeing in the room, wearing a poncho, and he tips and he walks around the room, and I'm just. <laughs> watching him. He doesn't say anything. He just tiptoes around, walking through the room, and starts to walk out the door. And he, before he walks out the door, he goes, that is right. I am invisible. <laughs> and then he walks out the door. And I, I, almost, I, I almost peed on myself. I was laughing so hard. 
when he said that. And I, and I was uh, doing an open mic that night at a place called the 3030 Club here in Louisville. And I said, Tom, are you, is that for your act? Because Tom was a magician also. And I, he said, no, I'm not. That was just for you. And I said, well, can I do that in the show tonight? And so he said, yeah, take that. It's retarded. <laughs> 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 so, so that night, I put on that poncho and tiptoed around the room at the 3030 Club. It was a small little club at the top of a bigger nightclub. It was like a little, and they had an open mic every week. And so I went in and did that and um, to silence. <laughs> I tiptoed her, I put on the poncho, I didn't say anything, I did it exactly how Tom did. I put it on the poncho, I tiptoed around the room, then got back up to the microphone and said, that is right, I am invisible. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> so I'm like, man, I thought that was funny. <laughs> and so I didn't do it ever again. But it was always in the back of my head. Yeah. And uh, 20 years later, 30, 15, 18 years later, I, my friend Pete Studebaker showed me his handling uh, for the uh, cards across. He was doing it, and I said, man, that's really smart the way you're doing that. And, and it popped into my head that those, that cloak of invisibility and the cards across, because I mean, I didn't want to just do the cards across, but I'm, you know, I'm trying to figure out some hook. And so I'm, it popped into my head, cards across, cloak of invisibility. And so... I would I, never have connected those two tricks. So, <laughs> uh, I, and I did that the next night in a, in a comedy club and that, you know, and that got actual laughs. And so that's where, that, so I owe that to Tom Hamilton. Good question, good question, yes sir. There's a gentleman here, yeah. you have a question? Would you tell us about your first day arriving in Las Vegas as a magician? Uh. My first day arriving in La I don't remember. <laughs> I mean, the first time I worked in, actually the first time I worked in Las Vegas um, was for a TV show. I had been doing, uh, you know, comedy clubs around the country and <laughs> There was a TV show, Evening at the Improv, that they used to shoot at the Melrose Improv in California, where I'd worked, but I'd never worked the Improv in Las Vegas, and they had, uh, they were taped a special episode of Evening at the Improv in Las Vegas, and so they asked me to be on that, and so I, I uh, and Judy Tenuta, the comedian, she was the host that night, and she said, she, my introduction was, I was so excited I was going to be on Evening at the Improv and I would get this beautiful tape to use for auditions and everything. And Judy Tenuta, her introduction was something like, and we were friends too. <laughs> and she says, till this, she, till this moment, she, she introduces me with something like, uh, uh, this next act, I don't know whether you've seen Judy, she plays a, an accordion and she's this crass lady and she's really funny, you know, uh, but she's, this is next act, what's that? Off stage, she's very sweet. Yeah, she's off stage, yeah. she's really sweet, and on stage she's like a mean, kind of, <laughs> <laughs> but it's really funny. And so she's, she, this next act is a magician, which means he molests a lot of children. Aww. Please welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I should have used that intro. Yeah, today. you should have used yeah. that today. <laughs> you know, so that's my first memory of Las I, Vegas. I, I, for years, tried to talk him into moving to Vegas. It took like five years. Oh, longer and, than that. And, he, yeah, and his, his wife, Jennifer, is a family therapist. Yeah. She's like a, a psychiatrist. And I would tell her, you know, Jennifer, we have a lot of crazy people in Las Vegas. <laughs> you could work, you could work. Yeah, she, w she had private practice uh, in Los, Lo we lived in Los Angeles for 10 years before you Las Vegas. I, you know I got Eugene Berger to help me. Oh, really? I called Eugene, I said, Eugene, I want you to call up Jennifer and Mac and tell them you had a dream that they had moved to Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> he said, okay, he did. <laughs> Uh, there's a, yeah, we, is that? Uh, yes, whenever that you were in Tombstone territory or working 
Tombstone Junction. Tombstone Junction, but yeah. There's Cane Tuck Territory, which is this, and Tombstone Junction, but there was never any. And Guntown Mountain. And Guntown Mountain. So there were like three crappy amusement parks that we had to choose from. They, they weren't crappy. They were, uh, they were, they were regional, uh, uh, lovely amusement parks. There were three lovely amusement parks <laughs> in the state. Tried a lot of stuff. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the beauty of that. I mean, we, you know, it, we were doing three shows a day, seven days a week, and we lived in a trailer behind the theater, call it a theater, uh, <laughs> a very lovely amusement park. <laughs> and <laughs> The uh, and so, but the thing was, I mean, we had we three at least three shows a day. If the park was busy, some we did as many as six, and you know, 15 minutes for him, 15 minutes for me, and we would and we did a trick together at the end. And but the but the amazing thing was, we lived behind the theater too. So at night, we could go in there and practice stuff that we wanted to work on. And and it's you know, if you got. Two people working together is way better because, I mean, I, he can do something and I can watch and, you know, say, yeah, that's fantastic, or I can do something and he can watch and say, that's crappy. Um, but, I mean, it, having a f good friend whose opinion you trust was invaluable. And, you know, I mean, I think it's a testimony. Uh, I mean, Lance, to me, Lance Burton is the greatest magician of my generation, and I believe that's because of my coaching. <laughs> So, <laughs> yes, sir. Have you ever considered doing anything else besides magic? Ah, have you ever considered, yes, doing anything besides magic? You know magic? that, right? What? What would I do if I wasn't going to be a magician? You would be an uh, anthropologist. No, that's not true. No. <laughs> I do have a degree in anthropology, but I never thought that, that I would be an anthropologist. But I, the only other real job, I mean, I've been really lucky. The only other real job I've had is a, at a, as a chef in a restaurant here in Louisville called 610 Magnolia. Really fantastic restaurant. It's still open, different chef, different owner. But uh, if I really love to cook and I, I, the guy in this, I started out doing close-up magic in that restaurant and then became, started working there as a chef. Um, and he tried to get me to quit college. My mom was so mad. He tried to get me to quit college to just come work for him, and uh, I didn't. Good for you. Yeah, good for me. Good for you. Now, you yeah. worked a lot of comedy clubs. I did. In the early 80s, the big comedy club boom. Macros I was really lucky about that, too. I mean, in Louisville, there's a guy, Tom Sobel, not a member of the Order of Merlin, but he's old. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> Calling me old. I'm calling you old. Okay. <laughs> you're not a, by the way, yeah. you said you're a member of the Order of Merlin for 43 years, yeah. which is not true. That's true. No. Yes. You've only been a member of the Order of Merlin oh. for 15, whatever oh, that okay. math is. Well, yeah. I, 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 You've I, been I, a member I, of the IBM for 43 years. Yeah, all right. All right. Just want to clarify that. Order of Merlin <laughs> Shield. All right. Shield. So, did the, the comedy clubs, did a lot of crazy stuff happen? What's the craziest thing? What's the craziest thing? That happened in the comedy clubs when you're working that circuit. Well, uh, we're doing this now? This is the big finish? I think, well, we've been on like 17 minutes. Oh, yeah, then we should do that. Uh, who caught that rope earlier? What, what's your name? Nancy. Nancy? Hold that up in the air, Nancy. You and I are going to try a little magic trick. And you've heard of Houdini, right, Nancy? You and I and that piece of rope are going to do one of Houdini's most famous tricks. Yeah, this is called the Houdini Challenge Naked Rope Escape. <laughs> oh, yeah. I just want you to take off your clothes and tie me up. <laughs> oh, of course, I'm kidding. No, you don't have to tie me up. So, in comedy clubs for years, I mean, I would do the rope trick, and then I would get a woman from the audience, and I would do that joke. One night in Knoxville, or one afternoon in Knoxville, Tennessee, I was working the funny bone in Knoxville, Tennessee, and the owner of the club, Barry Rosen, who I just reconnected with, I just found, Barry just came and saw the show uh, two weeks ago. 
And um, Barry calls me and he says, hey, I'm bringing a date to the show tonight. Can you get her up on stage? And I'm like, Barry, I don't, I mean, I'm really against getting people on stage that I know or that are friends of friends because I'm doing, a, I'm really doing a close up magic show for a lot of people. And that really depends on the person standing next to me from the audience. I mean, I'm trying to pick somebody who has really expressive face and really expressive gestures. And, you know, I, I like picking the people so that, so that they transmit that magic to the entire audience. And so I said, Barry, I, I tried to talk him out of having that happen. And, but he was writing the check. So, so I'm doing the rope trick and I'm looking at, the, you know, and it's like, I mean, it's the funny bone and it was very similar to this, probably about the same size, about the same size stage. The tables were even closer. Barry and this woman are sitting in the front, but they're in the dark and I can't get a good look at this person, this woman that he wants me to get on stage. But she comes up on stage and she's the exact wrong person for just the meekest little mouse of a woman and I just feel awful really I mean I think if I say to this poor woman what we just did if I say take off your clothes and tie me up that she's gonna cry I mean she just I mean she I mean I just felt terrible but also you know when you're performing you guys all know this when you're performing you know you're saying words but there's also another conversation going on in your head and that conversation in my head began like, well, I hope she does cry. It'll serve him right for getting me, in, you know, for making, making me get her up on stage and, uh, you know, screw up his date forever. And uh, so that's what goes through my little head. So I say to her, you know, uh, take off your clothes and tie me up. And then she whips off her dress. Boom. And he's, Barry is standing in the front taking photos of me. Of me and this stripper that he has hired <laughs> as a joke. <laughs> and, and I, so Barry just texted me two pictures. I'd never, oh, so that, yeah, no, no. apparently those pictures were up in the, in the lobby of the club. Um, for the next few months, but that club closed after a few months, and I never got to see those pictures, and they disappeared. I thought they disappeared forever, and but Barry was just at the show, and I said, "Do you have those?" And he said, "I think I can." And he said, texted me two pictures, neither of which are naked, which is a bummer, but it's but but it's of her on stage with me. So All right, here, let's get a picture of you, and me, and the Order of Merlin. Everybody, wave! Hey! Uh, and uh, I think the. I like the uh, uh, I like the uh, cloak of invisibility question. So uh, congratulations. The decision of the judges are final. <laughs> the rest of you, thanks for playing along. And just to remind everybody, if you register for the uh, convention for next year at Grand Rapids. Billy Toppin too. <laughs> uh, you can register for $230 if you register right now, which is a bargain, and we hope to see you. I will be there for sure uh, in Grand Rapids. And you are? Uh, really? Yeah. Are I, they honoring you again? No. <laughs> we have the Young Magicians. Thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I, I, so, uh, so I hope to be back at the uh, Order of Merlin next year so thank you all for your attention let's hear it and thank mr matt king thank you folks really that's awfully awfully nice of you uh, so, honor to be here and let's just check the time before we exit to make sure we only went three minutes over okay that's good <laughs> <laughs> thanks guys enjoy the rest of your hey have fun in louisville